All right, so let's uh, let's get into the last question, so we don't drag on uh, too much more. Uh, why do you decide to, you know, you, despite the advantage and challenges, why do you decide to sort of, because you told me you hired a Chinese manager to take over the role that you were doing. What what sort of made you to do that? Yeah, there, there's a couple reasons for for that, and and the first reason was I was in China for a very long time. So I went to China in 2000, and then I came back home to Boston in 2012. So that was 12 years. <laughs> and while I I love China and I still love going to China as often as I can, mm. I I really realized that I wanted to come back home to raise my family. And the reason for that is as an expat in, in China, and not just China, you could probably say this about many other countries in Asia, uh -huh. you never will ever be Chinese. And, and this is completely different from the United States where mm. there's a great Chinese community here. And, and if you're Chinese and you move to the United States, it's not gonna be long before you're a American. Chinese American. Right. So, so you can bring your family to the United States. You can develop. Your kids are going to have the same opportunities as people from other races. This is not the case in in China because the 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 racial mix is is so is so dominant. The Han Chinese, right. and and so this is this is one reason why I couldn't spend the rest of my life in China. So that was one factor. The, the other factor was just that China is such a challenging market. And if you're going to go in and you're going to have to have such a high learning curve in terms of figuring out how to sell to Chinese, I mean, there's a lot of advantages that I had as a foreign manager. And, and the main advantage that I had is I could bring in the knowledge of the company, the knowledge mm -hmm. of the service. I could build up a culture that embodied dimensional insight. And, and I think I did that very well. And then I could mm. get meetings with partners and, and customers. There are some things that I did really well, but we needed somebody then who was Chinese who could localize our marketing and sales mm. organizations to the needs of the market. Right. I was able to find that person. I was enabled to hand that over. And now I can provide support from a distance and then travel when necessary. And it works out really well. Yeah, and I, I think you really, I mean, that's really great. I mean, how you did it is actually really impressive. Um, and I think it's the right thing to do, in my opinion. And I, as I always said, I think I said it on your podcast as as well, as you really need to have both. You need to have the uh, a, a executive like you to bring that corporate value into China so that you don't, you don't have like a completely different company in China and say in the U.S., um, but at the same time, you really sort of have to recognize and empower the local people who really live and breathe China, right? To understand not only the culture, the history, how to deal with people, um, so on and so forth. Everything we have said in this podcast, yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. 